Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we have the third and last episode from the Wheel of Fortune tournament, Round 3. The semi-finals and finals can be watched on the CDH Portuguese League YouTube channel, link for which you can find in the description below. We have Diogo Costa piloting Niv Mizit Parun Curiosity Combo. Pedro Coelho is our second Eastern player on the tournament, Bal is on Kenrith Evolution based on Hires list and Bruno Costa again on Idris Storm. Diogo won the dice roll and Imulgan once, finding two islands and a jeweled lotus for ramp, chain of vapor and snapback for semi removal and trickbind to catch those thoracal plays, Riel for extra value with the wheels and glint horn package. Pedro Coelho Mulligan once as well and didn't want to go lower, he has two fours and a homeward path for land, with the Lenoir elves for return to Isan. Magus of the Candelabra for combo lines with Ashaya, Woodland Bellor is one of the two 6 mana value creatures that can tutor for some key cards with mana value 3 or less, and Regal Force can draw quite a bunch of cards. Baal Mulligan once as well, finding a lucky gemstone caverns, rejuvenating springs and a volcanic island for lands, Esper Sentinel for some probable card draw, Red Elemental Blast, Swan Song and Unsubstantiate for interaction. Lastly, Bruno Costa kept his first 7 with a Command Tower, Tropical Island and Windswept Heath for lands. Founder to try to find something to steer his hand to, the rest to preemptively attack the combo player's hand, Cabal Ritual for some storming turn and Chain of Vapor for some interaction. Ready for this match? Before the game starts, Bal announces his Gemstone Caverns, exiling an Unsubstantiate. Diogo then starts his turn, plays an Island and passes. Pedro plays a Forest and casts a Lenoir Else before passing. Baal plays a Volcanic Island and casts an Esper Sentinel, finishing his turn. Bruno plays a Windswept Heath and we're back to Diogo's turn. He plays an Island and casts a Jeweled Lotus, preemptively paying for the Sentinel's trigger. He passes and Pedro gets to his turn, playing a Forest and casting his Commander, Isan, finishing his turn. Baal plays a Rejuvenating Springs and attacks the Black deck. On his second main phase, he casts a Rhystic Study for extra taxing slash draw effects. It resolves and on his end step Bruno cracks his fetch for a tapped breeding pool before going to his turn. He plays a command tower and passes, not wanting to feed the cards to Bal with his ponder. Bal calls out a top deck mountain from Diogo and they all laugh as he does draw it and plays it, making it impossible to cast Neve with his 6 mana, so he does go for Riel, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. He passes to Pedro and he plays a homeward path. He casts a Magus of the Candelabra, triggering Rhystic but not paying, to save mana for one Isan activation. He then passes the turn. Bal goes straight into combat, attacking Bruno. On his second main phase, he plays a Bayou and casts an Imperial Seal. Pondering the odds of a wheel from Diogo, he goes for an opposition agent to the top to slow Isan and any other tutors and fetches from the other players. He passes and Bruno gets to his turn. He plays a Tropical Island and casts a Ponder, triggering Rhystic and Esper Sentinel, but not paying for either. He dislikes what he sees, so he shuffles before drawing and then passes the turn. Diogo gets to his turn and once again the table laughs, as the top deck land is a basic mountain. Well, now any colored land will allow him to cast his Niv, so he passes fully untapped. In his end step, Pedro activates Isan, and Bal instantly responds with his opposition agent. Bal checks Pedro's hand and then searches his deck for an Allosaurus Shepherd to deny him access to it. Pedro then gets to his turn, plays a forest and casts a Grand Through, which he had at hand already. Rhystic can Esper Sentinel trigger and he doesn't pay for them, to have mana for another activation. However, Diogo responds with his Chain of Vapor on the agent, in order to save the stacks piece and Bald can cast it later again. He does pay for both Rhystic and Sentinel triggers, and Bald decides not to copy it. Pedro then ponders for a beat and decides to activate Isen right away before Balan taps with his Oppo at the ready. He finds a Destiny Spinner for more protection and passes. Bald draws, plays a Tundra and keeps attacking the Black deck. On his second main phase, he casts Bloom Tender and passes. Bruno gets to his turn and without great options, he fires a Time Twister. Rhystic and Sentinel triggers and he can't pay. Diogo now responds to it with a Snapback, pitching a Trick Bind targeting Destiny Spinner. Rhystic and Sentinel triggers and he can pay only for one, so Bal draws one more and has now 10 cards in hand, so he ponders for a second but actually fires a Swan Song on the Twister, as he has more cards than everyone else and some of them he doesn't want to lose. It's now Diogo's turn and he simply draws and is forced to pass. In his end step, Bal probes Diogo if he can intervene in case he deals with Isan, but Diogo is unfortunately a bit behind. This way, on Pedro's upkeep, Bal fires a Silence, as he saw an Ashaya in Pedro's hand when he controlled him, and he is afraid Pedro can go off out of nowhere. Pedro draws and then activates Isan to tutor for a Circle of Dreams Druid. And now, with Ashaya and Magos, he can generate infinite mana and win from there, through Isan tutor chains. He only needs to untap successfully. Bal plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Badlands. He then casts his Opposition Agent and then activates Bloom Tender for 4 mana and casts Dothy Voidwalker. With the extra floating mana, he fires an Assassin's Trophy on the Circle of Dreams Druid. And Pedro, his longtime friend, is increasingly feeling more focused. 
Bal then spends his white mana on an enlightened tutor for a survival of the fittest and passes. Bruno is still not finding lands, so he fires his Dockside Extortionist. Ristic triggers and he doesn't pay for it. Dockside nets him 3 treasures and he then casts his Duress on Bal, triggering Ristic and Sentinel, and he doesn't pay for it. Bal draws 2 and responds with a mental misstep, so without further options, Bruno goes for his Windfall, triggering Ristic but unable to pay. At this point, Bal actually fires a Red Elemental Blast on the Windfall, since he still has more cards in hand than everyone else and Riel's trigger would fill Diogo's hand to 9, probably able to control the rest of the match from there on. No one else responds, so Bruno sends his 2 2 Swan at Bal and passes. Diogo draws and smiles as he plays the top decked Shivan Reef. He grabs his Niv Mizzet and slams it on the table. Ristic triggers and he doesn't pay. The Uncounterable Dragon surely resolves, and Diogo does have it all and casts Curiosity on Niv, triggering Ristic and Sentinel and he pays for one. However, as Curiosity resolves, Diogo has no mana to start the loop, so he's forced to pass with only two cards in hand, and so the other players have a turn cycle to try to find a solution, like a Reclamation Stage effect from Isan. Bal reminds Pedro he can send his opposition agent towards him to double block and maybe get a solution from his deck, but at mana value 4, Pedro replies it might be harder. Pedro plays a forest and casts Destiny Spinner, triggering the Ristic and not paying. He follows that with Wildwood Symbiote, triggering Ristic again and not paying, maybe Bal can find a solution. Pedro passes and Bal gets to his turn, and quite the interesting turn is coming. He draws and hits the Think Tank for a bit. He plays a Tarnished Citadel and then casts Alasaro Shepherd, which was exiled through Opposition Agent earlier. He taps Blunt Tender for 4 colors and casts an Uncounterable Survival of the Fittest, floating white and black. He then activates Survival, discarding a Noble Hierarch and tutors for a Grand Abolisher, just in case, knowing it doesn't stop land activations. Bal had announced he was going to try to win, so the table is discussing the options as he casts the Grand Abolisher. He then activates Survival of the Fittest again, discarding Eternal Witness and tutoring for Eula Drake, which he proceeds to cast. It enters and he steals Niv Mizet. At this moment, the table thought that Bal could loop Niv Mizet and win, forgetting that Curiosity was still being controlled by Diogo and only Diogo would draw the cards. No one noticed they were wrong. There was also a judge called by Bal to ask if kingmaking was allowed. The judge said it wasn't and Bal assumed that activating Homeward Path was kingmaking. With these things in mind, let's continue the game. Bal was going to cast an Abrupt Decay on some target, to announce the start of the would-be loop, but changes his mind and fires a Final Fortune, so that in case something would go wrong, he would still have another turn. With Niv Mizet's trigger on the stack, Pedro activates Homeward Path. This starts a King's Making Dispute with a table calling a judge. Pedro argues that Bal wouldn't win right now and that Bruno would still have a turn to maybe find something to deal with it, before Diogo would get to his turn. The judge agrees with his reasoning. Bal then goes to his extra turn and scoops it up to the Final Fortune trigger. Bruno gets to his turn and taps, draws and simply passes, and on his end step Pedro activates Wirewood Symbiote returning Alasar Shepherd to his hand and untaps his Lanwar Elves, so he can have 3 mana for an Isan activation. However, Diogo responds with a free Deflecting Swat to change the target of the ability to Destiny Spinner, triggering Niv Mizet to draw a card, and doing so pings an opponent, triggering Curiosity to draw a card and entering a loop that kills the table. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! What is your opinion on King Making? If Curiosity was worded differently and Val had the win there, do you think the Homeward Path activation was a King Making move? Leave a comment below, and remember kids, always read the cards! We would also like to remind you that the semi-finals and finals matches can be seen in the CDH Portuguese League's YouTube channel. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Shield, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonstake and Katerina, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!